Now, earlier today, 2024, Republican presidential candidate Senator Tim Scott, he joined the ladies of that hard-hitting ABC news show, The View, and finally delivered some much-needed truth to the show's far-left host. Take a look. You have indicated that you don't believe in systemic racism. What is your definition of systemic racism? Let me ask, answer the uh, question that you've answered. Does it or does it even exist yeah. in your mind? Let me, let me uh, answer the question this way. One of the things I, I think about, and one of the reasons why I'm on the show, is because of the comments that were made, frankly, on this show, that the only way for a young African-American kid to be successful in this country is to be the exception and not the rule. That is a dangerous, offensive disgusting message to send to our young people today that the only way to succeed is by being the exception. I'm going to suggest the fact of the matter is that progress in America is palpable. It could be measured in generations. I look back at the fact that my grandfather, born in 1921 in Sally, South Carolina, when he was on a on a sidewalk, a white person was coming, he had to step off and not make eye contact. That man believed then, with some doubt now, in the goodness of America, because he believed that having faith in God, mm -hmm. faith in himself, and faith in what the future could hold for his kids would unleash opportunities in ways that you, you cannot imagine. One of the reasons why I took the funding for HBCUs to the highest level in the history of the country and then I helped make it permanent is because I believe that education is the closest thing to magic in America. So I'm about making sure that our kids have as many opportunities to succeed as possible. So Wow. Now, notal, notably absent from today's panel was Joyless Behar, who came under fire for her previous comments, uh, accusing Scott of not understanding racism. Remember these comments. And he's one of these guys who, you know, he's like Clarence Thomas, black Republican who believes in pulling yourself by your bootstraps, rather than, to me, understanding the systemic racism that African Americans face in this country and other minorities. He doesn't get it, neither does uh, Clarence. Right. And that's why they're Republicans. All right, South Carolina Senator, presidential candidate Tim Scott is with us with more about today's appearance. Don't you like being lectured by a, a, a white <laughs> liberal about what it's like to be um, to have a, an African-American experience in America. Um, I've read your book. I've read Clarence Thomas's book. I know your life story. I know Clarence's life story. Uh, neither one of you had it easy in the early part of your lives at all. Plastic spoons, not silver spoons. But more importantly, Sean, you hit the nail on the head. Can you imagine uh, an extreme liberal, an elitist, telling me how to be a black man in America when she's a white lady <laughs> who dresses up in blackface. I can't believe the hypocrisy that comes out of that show sometimes. It is the height of hypocrisy to suggest that I'm the exception when, in fact, their policy positions as a radical left creates a, st a, st a, sorry, a rule that simply says that in order for us to be successful, you have to go to a failing school. You have to stay in your place. You can't go up as high as you possibly can the ladder. You have to actually stay at the bottom. Literally, they're suggesting that the rule that they want keeps poor kids in failing schools, keeps minorities at the bottom of the ladder, and then they remove the rungs of the ladder to climb. We are a meritocracy. Your talent, your character, your grit take you as high as you're willing to climb. But according to their policies, they take the first three rungs of the ladder out. I got to give credit to Whoopi Goldberg, who rightly, I thought, chastised the audience when they started to boo. And she said, no, we're going to let Senator Scott speak because they did attack you when you weren't there. And I think you had every right to do that. Look, I, I used to do that show. It's not worthwhile to do that show for me. But what I liked about today's today's edition is is they were listening to you, whether they wanted to or not. Uh, your message came through loud and clear, and I think it's a message that, frankly, Senator, transcends even race in as much as, you know, this should be the country with the ladder to success. And, and, and not, we're not a nation of victims, and we're a nation of people that can do great things regardless of how difficult our circumstances were when we grew up or how hard our lives have been or well, Sean, one obstacles of the things we face. Absolutely, Sean. One of the things that you and I have in common is a very blue-collar, everyday American background. You and I both had to figure out how to succeed in life, but the conditions of America make it possible for the working-class person to come to the heights 
of being in TV. You can look at me and say, a kid growing up in a single-parent household mired in poverty, can he one day be a congressman or a senator or a business owner? The answer is yes, yes, yes. Why? Because America continues to evolve in the right direction. We continue to call upon our, met, our better angels. We are a more perfect union today than we were yesterday or last year or last decade. We have to believe in the future of this country and then lean into that future and make it what it should be. Spend more time in the windshield and less time in the rearview mirror. Yeah, let, let's talk a little bit about your, your run for president here. Um, I knew because I had interviewed you and you said you were thinking about it. Um, you've got a pretty formidable field that you're going up against. Talk about the decision leading up to you deciding to make this run and, and what will be different about your campaign in your view. Well, thank you, Sean. One of the things you always should do is, if you're, if you're me and a seacoaster, you should spend a little time praying and talking to your pastors, talking about why it's important to throw your name into an ever-increasing hat. And for me, the peace that overtook me was this notion that America can do for anyone what she's done for me. Can I have a chance to restore hope, create opportunities, and protect the America that made me possible? Made in America is my story. And once I had peace about that, I decided I'm not running against a field. I'm running to be president of the United States to make sure that the next generation of, of the American dream makes mine pale in comparison to what they're able to accomplish. So making sure that we remain the freest, fairest land on God's green earth is my objective. And I'm so thankful that I have a, the blessing of running for president in the only country where this is possible. And frankly, Sean, the truth of my life disproves every single lie from the pit of hell that we're hearing from the radical left. All right, Senator, I won't give the full announcement, but we have a town hall coming up with you, and we very much look forward to it. Thanks for agreeing to do it. Uh, great job on The View today, and thanks for coming on to share it with us. We appreciate it. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.